Hello everybody, this is Walrus McFish Sr. and we are back with the next episode of NetHack. Hello Beauregard, the human priest, welcome back to NetHack. And here we are, the last video, you know, I mean, we made some progress. We found the quest, certainly, although we can't accept it yet. And we had this sort of unusual situation where we were farming up wraiths a little bit for level up, levels up. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about it a little bit more. You know, we could sit here and farm wraiths all day. But first of all, I'm sure that's probably not the best television, to be honest. You know, it's the Wraith Farming Show. Ooh. Here we are, it's the Wraith Farming Show with your host, Beauregard. And uh, in this show, we are going to create some wraiths, bash them with a wraith, bash them with a mace, <laughs> and then eat their corpses for power. So you can see here that that is not a wraith. No, that's not a wraith. Boy, God, what do you think about that? Well, I gotta tell you, I've seen some zombies. I've seen some wraiths in my day. That is not a wraith. I have to say, that's definitely a zombie there. Yep, zombies here. Okay, we got ourselves a wraith. Wow, and crikey, it's the biggest one I ever saw. So now we're going to have to go and eat this wraith. Of course, it can't see it yet, see us yet. Because we've got our infrared camouflage gear. So we'll have to put on our mummy wrapping. Uh, mummy wrapping. Get over here, wraith. Alright, crikey. <laughs> Get through the portal. Take off the uh, mummy wrapping again. And wear the, uh, the, the cloak. Cool. And then here he is. Hit the wraith, hit the wraith, hit the wraith, hit the wraith. And we got our corpse. Great. Yes, eat it. Great. Welcome to experience level 14. All right. But that's it. That's all we're going to do for that because, as we see, it's not exactly so thrilling. I got a couple more reasons why I wanted to do it this much, too. First of all, we're level 14, which means that now we can actually go and accept the quest. I see no reason why we shouldn't accept the quest. I don't think there's any reason why we shouldn't. You know, I mean, just to be able to... Oh, I'm a little hungry here, but we could eat maybe one of our five food rations is, is good. Yeah, we got plenty of food rations. Because, you know, you might as well get this out of the way, right? You know, I mean, if you're going to allow me to go on the quest, I'm pretty sure I'm in good standing with my god. Yes. Yes, my god, you are truly ready now. Attend to me, and I shall tell you of what has transpired. At one of the great festivals a short time ago, now Zork and a legion of undead invaded the great temple. Many acolytes were killed, including the one carrying the mitre of holiness. As a final act of vengefulness, now Zork desecrated the altar there. Without it, we could not mount a counterattack. Now there are barely enough acolytes to keep the undead at bay. We will need to go to the temple of now Zork, then from there travel to now Zork's lair. If you can manage to defeat now Zork and return the mitre of holiness here, then we can drive off the legions of the undead that befoul the land. Go with Bridget as your guide, Lord God. Thank you, Archpriest. You got a little bit of a, a unique speech pattern there, don't you? So great, we have officially accepted the quest. One way that you could actually render this game unwinnable is if you somehow like can't accept the quest. Like you accidentally change your alignment. And that seems just so unlikely. But I figured I might as well do it right now while I can. So now, great, we've avoided making the game unwinnable, at least in this regard. Can I loot this chest? Yeah, you guys don't care if I take your stuff, right? You know, su es mi casa. What do you got? Ooh, you got amulets. You got books. Did I already learn extra healing? I think I must have. Potion called speed. I think I already have that. But we can take this cursed triangular amulet. Quine, well, the might of holiness if you can. It will aid you against Nozok. Well, I'm doing my best, man. He's got it right now. So that's actually not really, like, helpful advice, is it? Yeah, these guys have just got a bunch of priestly platitudes to say. I'm honestly not that interested. Here we have a cursed amulet of some kind. I feel like maybe I shouldn't put that on, but I should be aware of it. You know, I mean, I guess I might as well keep it around. Cursed amulets can be really bad in this game, in case you didn't know. Cursed amulet has a high chance of being an amulet of strangulation which basically will strangle you to death in a matter of turns if you're not ready for it. Of course, you can pray to your god and have it be taken off. But, uh... Yeah, there we go. Alright. So now, no chance of making the game unwinnable, even if we, like, have some sort of crazy Rube Goldberg device where we accidentally set off a boulder trap that destroys an altar or something and our god gets really angry with us. Bridget can't take this away from us now. 
All right, and we're not going to farm up any more rates, even if we, you know, we could always do it later if we want to. But I think we're good. And also, I one one legitimate reason why I wouldn't want to get up to too high level is I believe that monster generation is determined by level as well. So, I mean, if I get up to super high level, the game might take that as a cue, like, oh, well, allow me to generate plenty of endgame monsters at you, because apparently you're ready. And we're really not. We still, need, we still need weapons and armor. So before we get too far, let's go and improve ourselves. Make it, maybe we can get to that wand of wishing and see what we can do about that. And uh, back to the portal. Cool. And, uh, yeah. So I guess we're good to go. I guess I didn't really have a plan for the rest of this video. You know, get one more wraith, accept the quest. And then just sort of plunge our way downwards. Six arrows. I mean, here's the way. Here's a, a pony, which is friendly. We could have a pet pony. <laughs> we got that saddle back at the Gnomish Mines, but I'm not going all the way back to the Gnomish Mines for a saddle. Hopefully we can get a source of level teleport sometime soon or whatever. That would be pretty cool. We'll be able to teleport around with our uh, teleport control. Which I also forgot about. That's very convenient. Especially when we get towards the end part of the game. Being able to teleport around is going to be real, real nice. Okay, well this is annoying. To which position do I want to be teleported? See? How convenient. Yeah, we teleported there and some... Oh, whoa, 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 a gremlin. I hate that. Gremlins are awful. Let me tell you what gremlins do. Gremlins are obviously from the movie Gremlins. If they encounter water, they will multiply. And if they hit you at night, they have a possibility to steal your intrinsic resistances. Isn't that about the worst thing you ever heard? Now, I don't know. It's just 8.59 p.m. right now. I don't know if that counts as night exactly, but I'm not taking any risks. I'm going to take him down with force bolts. I can't. Okay, he just has partial magic resistance. Please allow me. Yeah, you resist, but he, he died anyway. All right, I believe that that style of resistance only takes half damage or something like that. I'm not sure. We can still take him down. It's just not quite as effective. Potion of Sickness, fine. I think you can use Potions of Sickness to good ends. You know, I mean, nothing is completely useless in this game, really. Except for maybe the Wand of Nothing. <laughs> but a Potion of Sickness, for example, you could dip ammunition inside of it and turn it into poisoned ammo. Or, uh, you know, you could probably just throw it at one of your enemies and make him sick. <laughs> Anything else that we're missing here? Uh, it doesn't really look like it. I guess let's just keep heading down. Oh, no, no. One thing else, uh, another thing I wanted to try real quick is I have this emerald ring. I don't know why I'm carrying around the cursed triangular amulet. I might as well just drop that. It's probably nothing that we want to mess with. I could identify it at some point, but why would I drop I? Okay. And um, put on the emerald ring because we picked up this emerald ring and I'm curious to check it out. Oh my god. I was going to say it, but I didn't want to like jinx myself. I was like, I hope we get a ring of levitation. I'm so glad I put this on because this is like what I wanted. I was just thinking about the possibilities of like, okay, eventually we're going to need to be able to get over water in order to progress in the game. So we need a ring of levitation as our best option, but what are our other options? Like we can go back and get our scrolls of earth, but now that's all completely moot because we can fly. We have a, a ring of levitation that's so beautiful. That's like end game quality equipment to have a ring of levitation that you can just take on and off like that. So, and also we're just going to be able to progress the game so easily. All right. So this is exactly what we wanted. I'm going to take it off for now because levitating does have its disadvantages. You can see, for example, I can't reach this stuff on the floor. You know, I'm floating high above the floor. I can't, you know, go downstairs or anything like that. We'll take that off, though. You, you don't know how happy that makes me because I was, I was seriously just going to talk about that. All right, take off. No, no, no. Remove the levitation. So we've got levitation and conflict. Like, those are two seriously good rings. Like, maybe I could I could, could even wear a Conflict right now. I mean, it, it uses nutrition. Like, that's the reason you don't want to use it all the time. So, wearing rings generally takes nutrition in this game, which is a little unusual. Especially a couple of them, like Regeneration, for example, is very hungry. I think that Conflict is very hungry as well. Sometimes it's a good thing, honestly. Sometimes you want to burn nutrition real quick. Oh, man, you don't know how happy that makes me. Teleport way over here into this corner because I can see it. Go. Go. Nice. Nice. Teleporting around. We can fly. Here's some succubuses. Do you want to, you know, cavort? <laughs> what's, what's your deal? He can't, she can't even see me. I don't even know if this is a good idea. Are you, uh, are you a succubus? 
Oh, it's an incubus. All right, so never mind. Uh, you know, we're we're not allowed, not allowed to have carnal relations with an incubus. Oh, he's teleported away. So that's smart. Expensive camera is a pretty cool thing to have. Uh, but do we need it? I don't know. It can blind monsters. I feel like okay. Oh, I use it against a a, a vampire. <laughs> Let's see what happens. I bet that vampire wouldn't like it. Vampire is blinded by the flash. Oh, I thought it would do something cool and unique because it was a vampire. You know, vampires have a particular aversion to light. That's a cool item. I mean, that's a tourist starting item. Oh, we lost our level. So that's what I'm talking about. Let's hit him with the force bolt. You're blind, so you should die pretty quickly, and hopefully I'll get it back. But it's like, man, I get... this is why I don't feel bad. Ugh. Why I don't feel bad about draining those rates is because the game is equally cheesy about draining my levels back away from me. You see what I'm saying? What's my odds on that? I guess 22%. I should be able to cast it better than that. I'm out of power. So I gotta go and bash this guy. Alright, I can. I just don't want to get any more level drained. Alright, we got our level back. Yeah, the game will drain levels away from you just as quickly as... Uh, as you can take the levels from it. So, I mean, there's some might say that farming wraiths, as we did for a little while, is a little bit unscrupulous. That's a Vampire Lord. We remember we had a seriously bad time with a Vampire Lord a few levels ago. I'm going to start off with an Elbereth for that reason. Did you respect that? Yeah, you turn to flee now. I don't have enough magic. Man, there's Vampire Lords here. I'm annoyed by that. We probably should be able to take a Vampire Lord, but with a blessed, rusty, plus two mace, it's not what we really want to do. Magic Missile, I guess I could take him down, maybe. Wand of Slow Monster. <laughs> Wand of Slow Monster. Let's get him with the Wand of Slow Monster. Moving slower. That helps a little bit, I guess. Salute this box. Oh, there's a thousand dollars inside. That's cool. Should I fight this Vampire Lord? Let's just try to, like, just... Yeah, we can just sort of, like, dance around him a little bit. So he doesn't have a chance to, like... He's, atta he's trying to hit me. He doesn't know where I am. He's a blind, stupid idiot. All right. We're just going to do it like this. Destroyed the Vampire Lord. Hey, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> Maybe we can go back to the bottom of the Gnomish Not Nine sometime soon. But as I said, hopefully, eventually, we're going to be able to get a uh, means of teleport, level teleport. And with our teleport control, we can just blink back and forth to wherever we choose. Yeah. So anyway. Some might say that rate farming is unscrupulous. Ah, uh, here's a counter argument, which I'm not sure that I believe. You know, I mean, we did start the game with that amulet or with that spellbook of create monster, and you might say that's like a relatively non-helpful thing to start the game with, right? You know, I mean, like a spellbook of create monster. You can create monsters that are hostile toward you. It seems like it's not exactly like the most useful thing that you would expect to be able to start with in a roguelike game when other classes start with swords and magical rings. Uh, all of our gold. Let's just drop most of our gold. <laughs> sure. We don't, we're not using it for anything. We'll just make a gold stash here. So, you know, the fact that we had that spellbook of, of Create Monster as part of our starting repertoire and we didn't use it until now. You might say that we're just using what the game has given us. You know, we're just trying to be creative about it. Someone cursing shoplifters. Well, we might need to make use of that money in a second if, they, if you got something good for sale. What do you got, buddy? To what position do I want to be teleported? I guess to the shop. Where's the shop? Up here? Like, I feel like I'm, gonna, I'm still going to be more likely to find it right here. Just let's, let me search around here for one more second. Oh, Leocrata, he can't sit and hit me. He sort of can hit me. Yeah, it still hurts. Leocrata's are a little nasty, but we've got this Leocrata corpse here. To what position do I want to be teleported? Fine, how about up here? I stop eating, I teleport in the middle of my meal. Wait, why can't I move? What happens? Oh, I'm caught in a bear trap. Okay. <laughs> I was a little confused. I teleported into a bear trap. That's a little uh, unlucky and disorienting. 
Well, bam, I triggered a landmine. I fell, fell into a pit. There's a pit at the bottom of a landmine. Yikes, man. This place is a bad room. Somebody really didn't like this room. I want to make sure anybody who comes in here is going to get booby-trapped. Maybe it's here? Is that an incubus or a succubus? Is that the incubus? Yeah. No carnival relations with an incubus. I mean, you know, that's a little heteronormative here. It's 2015, you know. But, you know, NetHack <laughs> was not written in 2015, I guess. And that's a that's a sensitive, controversial issue, isn't it? Here, here we go. Dwarf. Cursed potion. Which I could identify, I guess. Was that a werewolf? We definitely don't want to get turned into a wolf. There's a winter wolf. Do you think the winter wolf is going to leave a corpse? I would love it if he did, because then we get... He has the chance for cold resistance. Eat it. No. <laughs> Come on, you think that would be a sure thing? A winter wolf? You eat a winter wolf and you can't even get cold resistance here? Give me a break, man. Alright, well, where's the shot? You know? I hear I heard the cash register. I, I would like to check out a shop. Maybe... Orange Dragon. Whoa. Okay, so Orange Dragon coming at me. Fortunately, most I was about to say that's a little bit nerve-wracking here. Dragons are nasty, but also a good source of resistances. And also, with an ambulator of reflection, they're not nearly as nasty as they could have been. So you got that Orange Dragon, and especially if Orange Dragon is elements of sleep. They shoot sleep stuff at you. The sleep gas is going to bounce off. Hits the Orange Dragon. Of course, it doesn't bother it either. Orange Dragon is still a tough foe, being as it's a dragon. Like, yeah, you see, it's it's actually able to chew through my life pretty quickly. Yeah, more quickly than I would like. How about let's throw some uh, force bolts at it? Because I guess we are still faster than it. But yeah, that was this is actually a tough monster, huh? You see uh, this tough monster here. I can't hit this thing. I could consider trying magic missile or something, I guess. Still got a few more force bolts in me. Yeah. Come on, then. Wreath, yeah, you can keep trying, but it's just going to keep bouncing off my amulet. One, two more force bolts. And it doesn't seem to be doing much. I killed the orange dragon. Very nice. All right, so I actually did do that. All right, very good. The orange dragon is dead. A cursed scion potion shatters. I don't think that's a huge loss. And we got an orange dragon corpse, which I will certainly eat. It's huge. What's that that I see over there? Is that a silver dragon? I really want to finish eating this thing. Um, it's a, only a baby. <laughs> can I finish eating this thing? Yes. Let, can I just bash this thing up? It's just a baby. Please let me just kill this, this stupid baby silver dragon because it's interrupting my important meal. You don't get the intrinsic unless you get clean plate club and finish the whole thing. Yes, resume our meal. I'm having a hard time getting it all down. I'm finally finished. Fine, stuff it in. We'll feel wide awake. That's good. So that's an intrinsic that we got. We got sleep resistance now. That's an important thing to have, kind of. It doesn't come up too often, but I guess we're glad not to be able to be put to sleep. And, uh, yeah, of course, dragons are huge, but we got that. We got a scroll of teleportation, and that was interesting. All right, so see, here's what I'm talking about. You know, up to level 14, the game is not shy to throw dragons our way at this stage of the game. So we could be seeing dragons, and that dragon, it chewed through half our life, didn't it? And we had to throw 100 force bolts at it. We can be careful and maybe try to strafe it a little bit, but um, I don't know, man. I'm a little bit concerned, you know, I mean, these monsters are getting tougher. We need to make something happen. Where is this stupid shop? Like, where, where would you imagine the shop is? Oh, great, I got a point of strength for some reason. Okay, I still want to say it's over there, but I'm not sure, and I'm about, I'm about to be ready to give up, too. Let me just go over here again real quick. Can I just, like, dig? Yeah, let me just dig, around, <laughs> dig in the general direction where I expect it to be. That makes sense. I'm too full right now anyway. Let's burn off some of that dragon. What is that? I can't dig that way. 
into a position do I want to be teleported? Actually, you know what? That's kind of a dumb idea because what if I accidentally teleport into the shop? Or if I dig into the shop, then the shopkeeper's going to get mad at me. So never mind. I'm not sure what's up with that shopkeeper. If we learn magic mapping later or something, maybe we can come back and check it out. But I don't know. It's taking enough of our time. Let's just head on onwards and see what's what. See what's going on here on dungeon level 15. Tengu. Whoops. Oh, yeah. We should get our mace. Kill the Tengu. We already have the ability to do all the things that we want to with the Tengu, which is nice. The game has been nice with the Tengus th this game. Giving me all the Tengus I could want. And I do want all the Tengus. <laughs> okay, it's a beehive or something. This is not too bad. Uh, I think this calls for a ring of conflict just out of principle. <laughs> yeah, all right. Everybody, all these bees are, are just going to completely turn on each other. It's too much. The killer bee misses the killer bee. The killer bee misses the killer bee. The killer bee misses the killer bee. Yeah, you can see. Like, I can press space bar. Queen bee is the only one doing any real work around here. These guys are too dodgy for their own good. They can't even sting each other. It's just a pointless bee dog fight. I don't want to use the word dog fight because it's just a bee fight. I don't know. This is not a situation that the bees are prepared for mass conflict you know i mean they pride themselves in their solidarity so what happens if they all get magically turned against each other they completely break ranks and uh, the integrity of the of the hive is compromised this is cool though i'm glad to find this place queen bee queen bee kill the queen bee Queen bee, queen bee, kill the queen bee. All right, good. And we got royal jelly. So we'll take all the royal jelly we can get. Nice. Not yet. I just want to take this royal jelly. And royal jelly. <laughs> all right, so we got tons of royal jelly, which is good. Royal jelly is a great food source because not only is it delicious and sweet and nutritious, but it also increases your strength. How can you argue with that? So our strength is going to be fantastic when we're done eating all this jelly. We're still pretty feel full from that dragon earlier. So actually, I think I'll, I'm happy to just wear my ring of conflict for now, just in case. You know, you don't want to be satiated so much because you might want to eat another corpse. It's kind of interesting. Part of this game is being able to tactically eat corpses sometimes. We could also like teleport around if we needed to. Like you know, we could just teleport back and forth a couple of times if we had the magic points to for it, or just cast some spells. That would be a good way to um, burn off a little hunger if we needed to. I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's great if you run into a situation where it's like you want to eat a dragon, for example. A dragon is huge, but it always gives you a resistance, so you definitely do want to eat it if you can, if you don't have the resistance. Scroll of Create Monster is interesting, although we've definitely shown that we can do it ourselves pretty well. Yeah, or there's other situations, like for example, we haven't really seen trolls yet. But trolls in this game will uh, regenerate. Their corpses will just come back to life if you leave them alone, so you got to figure out a way to deal with that. One way, the easiest way is just to eat them real quick. But that's not always an option, and sometimes you don't have the stomach for it. What do we got in here? Food rations? Sure. We got tons of royal jelly that we will eat preferentially. Because I'm going to be a superman here. Giant ants. Potion of sleeping. We could quaff it if we wanted to. I guess we should be keeping these potions just to make some more holy water. I am running a little bit low on holy water. I know I quaffed one stupidly and then we used one for those uh, blessed scrolls. Which I think was a very good use of one. I'm not complaining about that at all. Uh, Okay. Still satiated, no reason, real reason to eat anything more. Anything else going on in this floor? Nothing that I can really see. Is there a room over here, maybe? Nah, it just sort of connects back up here. Alright, keep on, keep on moving on. I'm seriously emboldened. I mean, my favorite thing that's happened in this video so far is still the Ring of Levitation. Seriously. Like, now that we have the Ring of Levitation, we can just go forward boldly and not have to worry about going down back to our stash for those Scrolls of Earth or any other things. Now it's basically just like, find what we find, and then go. You know, I don't know if it's better to do the quest before we go to the castle. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not a NetHag expert. But I will tell you that I had a priest character who was probably better prepared than this one, and he died in the quest level. 
So I think that maybe we could take it, but I'd rather just go and prepare myself a little bit more first. It would be nice to get the quest item too. I mean, the mitre of holiness, as you've heard, is quite a thing. It'd be nice to have on our side, right? Blessed magenta potion. Well, I see no reason why I wouldn't just quaff that right now. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> Position always be teleported. Let's just teleport back to the stairs real quick. I'm just get a little nervous there. I can move again. All right, yeah, so we got a little paralyzed there, I guess. Potion of Paralysis. I guess I'm glad it was a blessed Potion of Paralysis. It paralyzed me all the same, but you have to imagine the effect was maybe a little bit more forgiving than if it had been a cursed Potion of Paralysis, which might have put you there forever <laughs> or something. Okay, Chime of a Cash Register. We'll take these ducats then. Let's get a little bit of money. And we left a couple uh, thousand bucks just stashed a couple of floors ago. So if you find anything absolutely worth buying, we can. Scroll of Create Monster, that's a little deja vu. Didn't we leave a Scroll of Create Monster just sitting there in like the exact same spot on the previous floor? I don't know. Freaking out a little bit. It was glitching the matrix. Whoa, Elf Lord. Elf Lord. Elf Lord hurts, right? Elf Lord took away a few hit points and is creating zombies. Elf Lord is not that dangerous. If we didn't have sleep resistance already, we just had it. Like one good way to get sleep resistance is either to play as an elf or to eat an elf corpse. In fact, that's usually the way that I would do it. That's, I've never actually gotten sleep resistance through actually eating a dragon corpse before, to be honest. I've always seen elves before orange dragons, but not this game, I guess. It's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. And where are these... Oh, no. Water nymph. I didn't notice the water nymph there. Okay, water nymph here. Water Nymph has got to go. I'm going to zap it with um, Slow Monster. Okay, well, Slow Monster is empty, but we're still faster than it, I think. How about we get it with the Magic Missile? And then again. Killed the Water Nymph. And you got my bag, right? Yeah, give me my bag. That's my, my bag, baby. I, I can't be without my bag. Right? It's got all my good stuff in there. Yeah, we definitely don't want to lose any of that. We've got a thousand bucks in here. All right, so if we do find the uh, cash register, we can go and uh, buy whatever we want. Got a thousand dollars right here. And I did want to adjust, by the way, adjust my ring of levitation to L. Because we're going to be putting that on and take that off quite a bit in the end game. I'm serious. Ring of levitation, you, you got to have a ring of levitation. Like, it's seriously super duper ultra critical, necessary to beating the game, basically. There's other ways you can do it. You're not going to like my pickaxe. Let's drop it here. This is an interesting general store type area. Uh, whoa! Back off. <laughs> so a couple of problems. First of all, I didn't take off my Ring of Conflict, so he got really, really mad. Second of all, I have him invisible, which made him slightly mad. So I did forget a little bit of my uh, shopkeeper etiquette here. And besides, I'm not satiated anymore. I can take off my uh, Ring of Conflict. Put on my mummy wrapping here, my shopping clothes. I'm a dapper, well-dressed mummy about town. Ready to go hit the shops. All right, now you're gonna be a little bit more friendly. Sorry, that was a breach of etiquette. I know, Kino Javis. What do you got? Spear, destroy armor, no thanks. Food rations, we kinda got plenty. New kind of scroll, I, I would consider checking that out. Plain spell book, well, we could read it, but it would probably be dangerous. We could buy it, but uh, maybe that's not a good idea. Zinc wand, how much does it cost? $310 for this zinc wand. It's probably a pretty good one. Uh, but, you know, it's not going to be a wand of wishing, I don't think. I think a wand of wishing is more expensive than that. Sling, more spell book, potion of sickness, more mimics. You got a mimic problem, man. You got to clean out your mimics every once in a while, man. You got to take some pride in your inventory. Oh, man, more mimics. A blindfold, a credit card, 10 cursed darts, a blessed kind of potion. We might buy those just to have them. And we got, we, we got so much money now. I was sort of saving up money at the beginning of the game just so, to donate for protection. But we've done that already. Wand of Slow Monster. We have an empty Wand of Slow Monster. Maybe I'll just drop that one. <laughs> You want an empty wanted slow monster? Yeah, sure, here you go. Tin, food ration, gem. Yeah. Position do I wish to be teleported? I could just steal what I want and teleport away. 
New kinds of scrolls. Yeah, you know what? I mean, it's worth it to identify these things for me. Only 88 for this effervescent potion. Let's pay for it. Yes. And then quaff it. Tastes like slime mold juice. All right, so we know from process of elimination that this one must actually be slime mold juice. Call it fruit juice. Because the other one was seen visible, and if we ever saw another one, we could name it as such, but it doesn't really matter, considering that we can see invisible forever. Scroll of Destroy Armor, I wasn't that interested in this, but this was kind of neat. 177, odd oh, geez, I got only 176 in my inventory. Let's take out uh, coins. One dollar. And now I'll pay for it. Yep. I'll go ahead and read it. Oh, cool, it's magic mapping. Good to know. Potion of Sickness, anything else that we wanted to buy here? We could buy that wand and check it out. The wand could be good. I mean, the wand could be like a wand of, of something that we want to know. We also could consider buying that scroll. I think I'll probably buy both. How much for the scroll? 177. How much for the wands? 310. So how much is that? Like four, almost $500. <laughs> Nope. Yep. Cool. All right, and we can check it out. Let's just uh, do that outside. Take my pickaxe and um, read my scroll. Very greedy and sense gold. All right, cool. So we can sense gold wherever else. You know, turn a profit. Actually, you know, buy a scroll and detect gold. Detect some gold. Go treasure hunting. But I don't think we even need it. We're basically just spending gold for no reason, just just to improve our position a little bit here. Identify a little bit of extra stuff. How about this other kind of wand? Anything cool? Uh, how about... Um, yes. A few ice cubes. Okay, so we got... Wand, a wand of cold. Which is neat. That one actually kind of packs a punch. I was sort of hoping actually I would prefer fire or lightning. Ooh, giant corpse over here, which is kind of interesting. Yes. I tried to move the boulder, but in vain. I wonder why. Is there another boulder on the other side? Well, let's just actually apply my pickaxe here and break it apart, because there should be a hill giant corpse here. Yeah, they often leave corpses being as big as they are. I would love to eat it. No. Finish eating the hill giant corpse. And you see that actually doing that has increased my strength as well. So it's actually quite easy in this game to get your strength up eventually. You know, starting with low-ish strength is not a huge deal. We're going to be able to carry more stuff. We're going to be able to hit harder with our mace. We're going to be able to get our strength up even a lot higher than that. So uh, having, you know, just being able to eat giant corpses, being able to eat these um, royal jellies eventually, it's no problem, man. Yeah, so as I was saying, I would prefer to have fire or lightning just because you can use them both to zap and also to engrave Elbereth permanently on the floor. And you've seen how useful Elbereth can be. So, I mean, imagine being able to do that permanently. You know, that would be pretty cool. And it is pretty cool. You can actually use it as, like, an important way to take down a lot of monsters in the game. So we would love to have a Wand of Fire or Wand of Lightning at some point. Wand of Cold is nice, too. We'll use it when we need to. Let's keep going. That was a good floor. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so this is kind of interesting. We have entered what we seems to be an older, more primitive world, and I'm now represented by a smiley face, and there's all sorts of weird stuff going on here. Hit the Sasquatch. Sasquatch is, is hitting us, beating us up a little bit. Hit the Sasquatch. And, uh, all right, what is this? Is that just the, the way in? Yeah, it's the stairs. So this is kind of funny. This is the quote-unquote rogue level. Because done in a more primitive style, apparently this is um, what the old game Rogue used to look like, which is the game that NetHack is based on, basically. You know, that's why they call them roguelike games. Is because, well, uh, they're based on this sort of like the granddaddy of them all. And apparently it was relatively simple. It was, you know, something that definitely was a, a predecessor to NetHack, but, you know, it definitely paved the way. Kenneth Arnold, that's probably some reference to some developer that I don't understand. 
Several developers. Uh, are, okay, yeah, several objects here. A lot of time ghosts carry cursed stuff. There's a lot more food, though, here if we needed it. Let's remember food on the rogue level if we need it. Food ration. Tons of tons of food everywhere. It's not going to be an issue. 41 gold pieces. I mean, we just spent a lot of gold. There's lots of gold everywhere, too. I mean, I just dropped $1,000. We still have, like, what, $500 in our sack? We've got enough money. So this is cool. I mean, I never played Rogue. Maybe I should. Maybe it would be like an educational experience. You know, I mean, playing NetHack, you know, you can sort of get a sense of where Dungeon Crawl comes from, if all you're familiar with is Dungeon Crawl. Because I would certainly say that Dungeon Crawl carries the torch that NetHack passed a little bit. But NetHack is still going strong, man. You can see NetHack is still a thing. That's the stairs, I believe. Let's read this other scroll. Oh, no. <laughs> My wrapping smolders. Scroll of Identify catches fire and burns. Yikes, I had a scroll of Identify? Scroll of Teleportation. Potion of Extra Healing. <laughs> Whoops. I lost a lot of stuff. All right, so that's bad. All right, that's annoying. I lost some of my stuff that should have been in my inventory. That's true. But all that happened was my mummy wrapping got burnt, which is kind of good because I wanted to take that off anyway. I mean, that just makes it even more dapper. It's a little stylish. Let's um remove... Yeah, take off the mummy wrapping, I guess. Thanks for reminding me. And I should have used that scroll of identify when I had the chance. I guess I had the idea that I was going to bless it and identify everything at once, but I should have used it to identify that brass ring, for example. I really wanted to know about that. Uh, so just put on the cloak. And at least nothing else too important got burnt, right? My speed boots didn't get burnt, right? That's the most important part. And now we know another one of the bad... Scroll, scroll of fire. I sort of forgot about that one for a minute. I was thinking it might be punishment. We're getting towards the point where we haven't... We've seen a lot of scrolls, but we haven't seen punishment. But I feel like punishment is something that we can deal with. Just with a quick prayer, or possibly through other means. Yeah, in fact, it should be very easy to deal with with a pickaxe, I think. Anything else with the rogue? Oh, owlbear. Let's not get caught by an owlbear, because we've seen an owlbear can grab you and hold it in place... I don't want to be caught there like fighting three monsters at once. If we're going to fight them, let's fight them at least one at a time in proper, proper roguelike fashion. Back off into this hallway. I could teleport away as well. Even if he grabs me, I wonder if I can teleport away from the grapple. Wow. Oh. Irrelevant. We've gotten to the point where an owlbear does not even concern us. And there's a monkey, which is kind of friendly, and an umber hulk, which is friendly too. That's pretty neat, because I don't like umber hulks. They're kind of annoying. They have a confusion gaze attack. So I guess they're beasts of the wild in a sense. They're they're uh, neutral enough that they're not going to bother us. We're cool. What position? Uh, Wand of Slow Monster. Uh, it's good. Ape. See, we're cool with all the primates. We're chill with all the primates. You know, we're more alike than different. Let's put on our... Uh, I guess I don't want to put on my Ring of Conflict just because there's all these friendly monsters about it. I'm just talking about how peaceful we are with all the beasts of the wild. That would certainly change if we changed the jewelry. But I just uh, also wanted to maybe burn off some of the satiation. Sure, let's put it on right now. All right, back in normal interface world. Yeah, that's a little bit confusing to me. I don't even know what that is. There's a snake hiding under these walking shoes. Yeah, and it's like, there's interesting shoes and stuff, but I'm, I'm honestly not even concerned. We have plus five speed boots. What other kind of shoes would we ever want ever in our lives? The answer is never anything ever. <laughs> if there's one thing we're satisfied by in this game, it's our boots. Another $400 just lying around here. Man, I never know how much money to take. It's like, you know, it, it sort of weighs you down a little bit. But, on the other hand, of course, you can spend it on useful stuff. I mean, we are carrying around 500 bucks right now. We could have 500 more if we wanted to. But I just don't know how many more shops we're going to find or whatever. All right. What was that? A jelly, I believe. I'm not sure if that can splash us. I'm not even sure if I want to deal with that. Like, if I... <laughs> what if I throw force bolts at you? I'm, there's nothing there. Here you are. Alright, I'm going to throw full force bolts down. Spell hits it. Spell hits it. It resists. Oh no! 
I can't believe that I don't know what it is, but I can still tell that my force bolt resi it was resisted. I guess maybe you can sort of tell. You can sort of feel like the magical feedback, you know. Oh, there's nothing there anymore. All right, so we'll just zap it down through here. Spell misses it. I'm just wasting all my magic. Come on, man. All right, hit it some more. I kill it. All right, didn't even leave a corpse. I'm not even sure if those things leave good, leave good corpses. But it's not the sort of thing I want to be bashing with my mace. It'll just get rusty and rustier. All right, leprechauns. Well, let's put away our $13, I guess. All of my money's in my sack. Put money into the bag. Uh, put money into the bag. Coins, all my money. Yep. And now I can bash leprechauns, I guess. There's no reason not to. They're just going to run away. Oh, and I've got my ring of conflict on here. <laughs> Which is hilarious. So we've got serious uh, leprechaun infighting going on right now. 900, tons of money. See, this is what I'm talking about. Just like so much money. If we picked all of it up, it would just it would weigh us down. But if I wanted some money on the way back or something, if I wanted to buy at one of those shops, I remember there was like a potion shop up on a, a floor a long time ago that I might like to investigate. What do we got? Fortune cookie? Sure, I'll eat a fortune cookie. Scrap paper inside it reads, A monstrous mind is a toy forever. Very profound. I actually have no idea what that means. A monstrous mind is a toy, toy forever? Is that supposed to be a, um, a positive thing or a negative thing? Right? Is, is monstrous like good? I mean, monstrous usually means bad. Toy sometimes means good, but sometimes means bad, right? I mean, I guess a toy means like a monstrous mind is like an immature usage of a mind or something. I'm not sure, man. It's too deep for me this leprechaun up. He's going to try to one away. And he's got $800. Yeah, these leprechauns can just sort of scatter the gold as they please. Honestly, I'm not really that concerned. You can just hang on to it for me. You know, maybe invest it wisely. For some reason, the invisible leprechaun's presence is known to you. I feel aggravated at the invisible leprechaun. Urgh, I'm going to get you, you stupid invisible leprechaun. I know just where you are. And you're dead. You're dead meat. You too, buddy. You're an accomplice as far as I'm concerned. Key more money, tons of cash, and this new kind of ring. Okay, well, I got my levitation. That's all I really, really care about, but let's put this on anyway. Take off conflict, I guess. Put on shiny. <laughs> okay, we'll take it off shiny. I don't want to just be wearing random rings right now, just in case it's polymorph or something and I bust through my armor. I got, you know, that wouldn't be a huge issue right now, but I don't want for that to happen again. I'll just identify it later when I can. Put on the Ring of Conflict for now, sure. And if we get super hungry, I'll just eat some of my uh, royal jellies because those are weighing me down a little bit too. I sort of want to get those out of my inventory. Leprechaun drinks a cyan potion. All right, so we know what that cyan potion is about now. It's just a potion of healing. And these leprechauns don't know what they're doing. They're just scattered around. <laughs> yeah, again, leprechauns... You know, they, they had a thing going, they had a society going, and then they, nobody expects the Ring of Conflict. The bees don't expect it, the leprechauns don't expect it. You see how effective the Ring of Conflict is at just messing everything up. Ruins everybody's plans. Uh, I think there might be another room down here, right? This seems quite likely. Oh, Grey Elf. And leprechauns are fighting each other. I'd rather deal with that uh, Grey Elf first, I think, because the, the Grey Elf is more dangerous. But they're just going to kill each other. Yeah, there's a gray elf corpse. Would have been a good choice for a sleep resistance. Also, potions of healing. Also, yeah, since one of my potions of healing boiled away, I guess I'll take it. Blessed blue and green shield. It would mess with my spell casting even more. I mean, my, my small shield right now is already sort of messing with my spell casting. I don't know, man. We could experiment with that later, I guess. Yes, I'm not sure exactly. Maybe we'll ditch the shield at some point, but I can't go two weapon combat with a priest, so I sort of feel like I might as well at least keep one. But it's not doing us a whole lot of favors right now. Just a plus zero small shield. I don't know, man. We'll consider it. It's good to have the options. Elves have got pretty good stuff sometimes. Elven equipment is okay. Now, like, if you, did you have an elven helm? No, just the boots. And again, we are completely satisfied with our current boot situation. Thank you very much. Please stop calling. 
down we go, I guess. Continuing to plunge, man. I mean, there's nothing else to do but to continue to plunge. I told you we we're going to get some dungeoneering in, in this video. You know, last video we sort of were mucking around, getting our AC down to where it was, eating some wraith corpses. This is just plunge away. Plunge until you can't plunge no more. Forked wand. I would be very curious about that. That is, I believe, something interesting here. Can we have this explode real quick at me? I could put on a towel and avoid this, but the invisible black light explodes. I'm caught, caught in a blast of kaleidoscopic lights. You freaked out. To what position do you wish to be teleported? Nah, who cares? I just want to see. I'm now hallucinating, which is one thing we haven't seen in this game. So in case you haven't seen this before, it's very sort of funny and silly. You can hallucinate. And yeah, like, for example, all things, all different objects just continually flash between random stuff. So this is a boulder, but it doesn't even look like one right now. And there's a bunch of crazy stuff in here. So with the Ring of Conflict, a lot of entertaining stuff should be happening right now. I enter a leprechaun hall, but look, it looks crazy. There's no leprechauns in here that I ever see. It looks like a bunch of crazy stuff. Uh, yeah, and these guys should start attacking each other pretty soon. Unless I'm stealthy enough, I guess. I hit the Ogre Lord. The Straw Golem hits the Master Lich. The Orc Captain steals some gold from the Flesh Golem. The Orc Captain suddenly disappears. You hit the Garter Stick. Baby Skargadile hits the Godzilla. The Ape Sand from the Flaming Sphere. Ape Jabberwock. Et and Mummy. Uh, let's see some silly ones. Marilith hits the Jumbo Shrimp. Uh, Bluchitherium is a real one. One-Eyed, One-Horned, Flying Purple People Leader. Uh, Alright, and these guys are teleporting and stealing away. The Evil Iggy. The key rin is real, but still, this is crazy. You can see, it's like you never quite know what's what. If I didn't know that this was a leprechaun hall, I would be rather confused right now. I'd be like, what's going on? This is crazy. Case okay, spiders. Yeah, okay. The brogmoid. Hit the brogmoid. The samurai rabbit. The earthquake beast. The sleezoid. That's awesome, man. See, this is all cool. Lion dog. I'm just going to let this keep going for the duration here because I know what this is all about. Jaguar, Amazon. If you see anything that's pretty hilarious, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. I'm going to have to keep going through this eventually because, well, these guys are just going to start killing each other. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to cure out of this eventually. The reason I was happy to, um, to see it is because at any time I could cure out of this using my unicorn horn. So it's kind of an interesting thing to happen to you earlier in the game when you can't deal with it. But uh, by now, it's it's completely basically a non-thread. All right, I think we've had our fill. Let's go and uh, dispatch with these leprechauns in a sound state of mind. You see they had the ravenous bug bladder beast of trawl. I saw that one flash by as well. That was pretty funny. Yeah, these guys are going to kill each other. Let's just kill each other. Want to make it visible? Cool. That's fine, though. I saw an amulet here. Did one of those leprechauns steal it? Maybe not. I'm not sure. Oh, that might have just been a hallucinated amulet. Never mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bash each other up. I know you all secretly hate each other. A little bit of whiskey brings out the, the true hidden passion aggression here. You know, working out a leprechaun hall, long arrows, investment banking, it, uh, it's, it's a little bit tough on your psyche, man. These guys take it out sometimes. They get drunk and they beat each other up. Well, Ring of Conflict is just an excuse, honestly. The Ring of Conflict doesn't do anything. I just told him it was Ring of Conflict. These guys wanted to beat each other up the whole time. That's the real secret about the Ring of Conflict, is that there's underlying dark currents flowing through society. You know, society is barely held together by a series of arbitrary rules and contracts, but really, all living creatures are beasts of the wild, bound by darkness, you know? I mean, tear each other's throats out if we could. Right? <laughs> No, nah, man, I don't think so. I'm a pretty civilized guy. And, you know, beasts work together, too. Even, like, meerkats or lions or whatever, they like to live together, work together. No problem. And humans are the best at it, obviously. We can work together to build sweet, you know, airplanes or whatever else. Do whatever you want. And, of course, there's some humans that are a little bit less cooperative, too. But, you know, you got to be independent, too, man. you gotta, you got to strike the balance, I guess, between individuality and community. It's part of the human experience, man. No, oh, wow, thousands of gold. So this is just tons of gold. Uh, slime molds. Sure, I'll take them in case we need to tame an emergency pony, but I think the days of emergency ponies are behind us. Right. Leprechaun's fighting in a dark room now, just to add to the excitement. All right, we're going to take off the Ring of Conflict because it's just making us hungrier than we need to be. And the Leprechauns have all punched each other well and good. I think they learned their lesson about the underlying dark current society. Let's eat some of this uh, royal jelly. Yeah, and see, it's pretty nutritious, too. 
And my strength is up to 18. If you guys don't want to waste any scrolls of teleportation or whatever, that's fine. Eating a, te eating a leprechaun or a nymph corpse is a good way to be able to get teleportitis if you want it. It's a little bit of a dangerous proposition if you don't already have teleport control first, which is why Tengu is the much better choice. But if we had only found one Tengu and got teleport control as we did, we could have just been eating at leprechauns and been very happy to find these leprechaun halls. Then we would have been able to teleport, by now at least. Finding the Tengu is usually the tricky part. Don't read that scroll of teleportation. I need that. Footsteps of a guard on control. That means there's even more gold around, but it's like, seriously, man, how much gold do we honestly need? Give me that forked wand, though, because I was curious about that. Oh, man. These guys... Alright, so somebody's zapping this wand. Wand hits the giant mimic. <laughs> Alright, so somebody's zapped the wand. It might have been a wand of... I thought we already saw a wand of striking. I'm not sure what was hitting me, though. Kill the leprechaun. It did seem to be doing some damage to me. There's a mimic there. Did you have the wand? Give me the wand. <laughs> wand of striking. So it was a wand of striking. All right, never mind. I thought I identified a wand of striking for some reason. But I guess not, and we don't really need it, considering that we can cast Force Bolt. Pretty simply. These leprechauns really think they're tricky, snatching the gold all around my feet. You don't realize that I don't want it. There's a giant mimic. Cool, giant mimic, absolutely no problem. That's nice, after that giant mimic was like a prayer-worthy threat earlier on in this game. So many leprechauns, it's like, why, why am I doing this? All right, new plan, ignore all these stupid leprechauns and just leave. Right? They can just play their leprechaun games amongst themselves. Reading scroll of create monster. Okay, carnivorous ape. I did want to, like, not be weak real quick. So let's go ahead and eat one of these lumps of royal jelly. Yeah, so check it out. My strength is even higher now than it was. It's sort of a weird system in this game with strength. Like, the next highest one after strength 18 is 18 slash 01. Which is weird. You can get the 18 slash 01. That goes all the way up to 18 slash 99 which is the highest strength in the game. Or, if you wear gauntlets of power, then it can go up to um, strength 25, which I think is basically equivalent. It's a really weird system. It's like a weird tennis system that like doesn't make sense. Wand of striking. Yeah, see, I thought... Was that wand forked really just a wand of striking? I hope I didn't miss out on a good wand because a leprechaun snatched. I should have picked it up when I had the chance. Or did I pick it up already? Wand. No, I don't have a forked wand. I'm not sure. Oh, well. Cool, head downstairs. I still got a couple more floors in me. And in fact, wait, there's probably more going on over here on the other end of the Leprechaun Hall. Seems like maybe another room or two in here. Leprechaun cannot flee. We wouldn't give him the, the opportunity. So many Leprechauns, man. That was a huge Leprechaun Hall. <laughs> and just so much money. We could have such a good score right now. Imagine my score. All right, but we're done. Let's move on. Position do I wish to be teleported? I could try and check out... I sort of wanted to check out maybe, like... Huh. Maybe, the, maybe there's a... Oh, actually, it, was there not a, a vault on this floor? Probably the vault is down there on the lower left. So that's probably why that there's, there's a conspicuous gap right there. Let's go ahead and eat one more lump of royal jelly. Oh, royal royal jelly. Oh, let's eat another one. So that's good. Strength going up slowly but surely. 1803 now. Which is just much higher than it was. I mean, we started off with much lower strength. Wasn't our strength like 12 or so? And there's just more leprechauns. Did these guys all escape down the stairs? That seems very silly. Let's just eat this giant ant corpse. And uh, you guys should not be repopulating other levels, please. You know, two levels of leprechauns is enough. We don't need many, many levels of leprechauns. Whoa! Hill giant. Chance for more strength. Am I right here? Why don't you come up here, hill giant? Uh, bugbear, bugbear, bugbear is dead. 
And okay, we. I sort of want to deal with that uh, hill giant, yeah, separately. Can we take you like outside here real quick? Can I drag you just like up up here a little bit? All right, yeah. Like here's the Urukai. I'm gonna go ahead and put on conflict just to burn off a little nutrition because I want to eat this um, hill giant and I also want to make sure that nobody bothers me while I'm doing it. Like these guys are gonna fight each other. No, no teleportation necessary. Crew giant hit me with a dagger. You think that'd be a little unwieldy for a giant? Like a dagger would be the size of a toothpick. But I guess you gotta make do. I mean, you know, it's, it's a giant in a not giant world. Almost if I crossbow bolt, but I don't care. What are you, a centaur? No problem. I don't care. What are you, an air elemental? Invisible stalker. Seriously, not an issue. Okay, finish eating the giant. Good, we finished eating the giant corpse. My strength only went up by one point, but still, it's like way better than nothing. And conflict, anything that interesting happened here? More corpses. You see, you don't even have to fight. You let the monsters kill each other. Bugbear, what's in here? Nothing. Nothing. Wand misses me. Who did that? There's a troll? Oh, and you got a wand of striking. See, we need magic resistance. Bad. We don't have any magic resistance yet. So this is what I'm talking about. I alluded to this earlier, but we haven't actually had the chance to put it into effect until now. If we leave this troll corpse be, he'll just resurrect himself from the dead and regenerate and continue to harass us. So what we need to do right now is actually eat this troll corpse. Yeah, see, I wasn't even fast enough because I passed out from his somehow immediately rotten corpse. I guess maybe because he keeps dying, comes back to life. You know, some of the flesh is bound to get necrotic. It's not hygienic, Mr. Troll. You resume the meal of light covered troll rises from the dead. Hilarious. Ha 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 ha. Troll hitting me. I don't care, but now we got to fight him twice. And they're pretty tough foes, too. That's what I'm talking about. See how this troll is beating up on us? And we got to eat him again. And we finished eating the troll corpse at least. All right, took a couple of tries. That's a little unsettling when you're eating a hamburger and all of a sudden the hamburger comes back to life and then you have to kill it and then re-eat the hamburger. But sometimes that's the way it goes in the world of NetHack, man. And what have we here? You might be like, what's this weird reverse wand? Well, this is actually an opulent throne. I don't know if you noticed that we entered an opulent throne room. So here we are with an opulent throne. And uh, there's a couple of things that you can do with the throne. Pretty much the only or best thing you can do with it is just sit on it. I think there's a couple other interesting things you might be able to do with it by looting it or something like that. But mostly you just want to sit on it. There is a small but non-zero chance it might grant us a wish. There is also a small but non-zero chance it will allow us to genocide a species of monster. Both of which would be desirable outcomes. And usually the, there's not many bad outcomes. It's pretty much just like see if you get lucky. So let's sit on the throne. I feel somehow out of place. That's a normal message because, well, nothing happened. You know, that's usually what happens. But nothing bad happened either. Sit on the throne again. An image forms in my mind. Ah, because I'm feeling so opulent, I just have a sense of the map of the world. Cool. See, mostly good stuff happens when you sit on a throne. You always hope for the real good one, though. I feel somehow out of place, and I imagine it's going to vanish right now. The throne vanishes in a puff of logic. <laughs> Very good. Another Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference, right? You know, between the towel and the puff of logic and the ravenous bug bladder beast of troll. This game is filled with cultural references, obviously. You haven't noticed by now. Uh, all right. <clears throat> well, that was a good experience, at least. It might have been cool to get a wish, but man, you know, I mean, the game's not making it easy on us. We could have gotten a wish in Gnome Town. We could have gotten a wish here. But nope, the game is like, hey, man, get it yourself. All right, here we are in here. What's this? A blessed yellow potion. Oh, I forgot we had magic mapping. I was just like, oh, let's just teleport to this room, which we've explored already. No, not really. I mean, we barely see any of this stuff. We just had a magic map from that throne. New kind of blessed yellow potion. I'll definitely check that out right now. Oh, we got a blessed yellow potion and a yellow potion. I guess we'll start with the blessed one. <laughs> wow, this makes you feel great. Um, I don't know. That was pretty ambiguous. Uh, I don't know. I mean, what's called feels great? Was that just like something like restorability or something like that? I'm not sure about that message. I mean, it's obviously like good. It could have been like restorability or something. I'm not sure exactly. But uh, I, it can't be bad. And I've got another one. Maybe I can identify it more later. But good to have, I guess. Why not? Yep. 
plane centaur, no problem. Take off my ring of conflict for right now because I don't need it. Realize Johnny Yeast part of me from not rising. Ha 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 ha. I would love to have a comedy headstone when I die. That'd be awesome, like Haunted Mansion style. Is that a fire giant that I see? I think it might be. He's throwing boulders at us in the style that giants sometimes do. But I think we are actually pretty happy to be fighting a fire giant. He can barely see us. We're so small and invisible that we definitely have the element of surprise. Look, he's trying to flee already, and in his fleeing, he accidentally fled in the direction that we were and stumbled over us, which is the most dangerous thing he's done so far. He took two HP away as he sort of kicked us. But now we got a fire giant. Oh, he was caught in a bear trap. I see what happened. That's a little tragic, but man, a giant stuck in a bear trap. If you can't open that, you know, what kind of giant are you? All right, well, I'm glad to be stuck in a bear trap here while I eat a little bit of sustenance because a fire giant corpse is great for two reasons. First of all, extra strength, as you know, from the giant. Also, come on, fire. What do you think that's going to give us? Having a hard time getting it all down, but I'm finally finished. Come on, man, right? Where's the fire resistance? A little stingy with the resistances this game. I guess we worked up uh, sleep resistance in this game. That's one that you, you should have. But fire and cold resistance are real, real important, too. we got to get those at some point, you know? I mean, the reflection is doing good for us. But it's just, it's nice. You know, what if we got engulfed by, like, a fire vortex or something like that? Where's that statue of an ape? I guess we'll chop it open. Just for fun. <laughs> I don't appreciate ape statues in my dungeon. Seven level teleport trap, momentary blind, and I can go wherever I want to, but I feel like this is exactly the right place for me at this time. Darkness surrounds me. That's just rocks that I chopped from that ape statue. One more room over here. Do, do, do. Now we've already checked this out. All right, cool. More floors just knocking them down, man. And I think maybe this is going to be my next floor. I think this video has gone on for about an hour-ish. So let's just see what we have on this next floor. All right, looks like regulars. There's a lot of floors in NetHack. <laughs> That's one thing you could say about it is that it's, you know, I mean, it's definitely certain, uh, definitely a certain rhythm to it, a certain tempo for it with lots of these kinds of floors. And then you'll see later when we get into Gehenna, it's going to be a lot of mazes. Trust me. I mean, you may think right now teleportation is a mild convenience. When we get to Gehenna and it's all mazes and we have to be able to, like, you know, traverse these mazes to get from place to place, you're going to be real glad that we have the ability to teleport from place to place. You're going to be real glad, too, if we have the ability to do magic mapping because who, who wants to solve 800 mazes in a row? But, on the other hand, um, we might not get magic mapping, so we might have to solve 800 mazes in a row. But, you know, I mean, it's definitely, there's definitely lots of stuff to break it up to. Like, we saw the rogue level. That was pretty cool. And I have to imagine, I think we're probably getting pretty close to the next stage of the game, right? 21, dungeon level 21 is pretty deep. I feel like I'm getting to the point where we're probably going to be seeing some excitement pretty soon. I'll, I think I'll save it for the next video. This is just more of a transitionary video, I guess. Going down here, diving down here as deep as I can get. You know, I mean, next time we'll see some of the interesting stuff, maybe. We, we did see interesting stuff. What am I saying? I'm not trying to, like, downplay it. We saw, like, an opulent throne room and some leprechaun halls that we hallucinated in a little bit because we accidentally drank some, drank some potions of drugs. Here's a sink. Um, and, of course, we've got our, our, potion, our ring of levitation. I can't emphasize enough that that is, like, the most significant part of this video. With the ring of levitation, nothing can stop us. Ouch, that hurts. Yeah, we got a ring. That's good. What is it? Wire ring. I guess I'll put it on. Didn't do nothing, so I'll just drop it down the drain. Drop that. Wire ring down the rain. What does it do? Static electricity surrounds the sink. All right, that would have been a good one to have, but it's shock resistance. Okay. And maybe I should drop some of this other stuff, too. Like, what about other... What's my other one? Ring levitation, I'm not dropping at all. Brass ring, I know to be expensive. Shiny ring, I just found on the floor, though. Let me just drop it. The ring is regurgitated. Oh, cool. All right, so that is actually a ring of slow digestion, which is cool. So I don't think that's ever going to come to be a real factor for us, considering that right now I'm satiated and actually trying to, like, burn off hunger a little bit. But it's nice to have, and it's nice that it got regurgitated out of the sink. You never lose those. 
So it's cool, you know, I mean, if we ever got into a situation where hunger was, like, of the essence, we have the ability to do something about that now. Ping on, put on slow digestion and just not worry about it. That's a great find for, like, a monk, which has to go for a vegetarian conduct, or, like, a wizard that's going to be casting a lot of spells all the time. It's a great find for any character, too. I'm glad to have that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Wait, Scorpion is here. Scorpion is a little bit confused. For doing a surprise attack, you probably have a little bit better idea of where I am. But I guess I stumbled upon his box, so it was kind of... I, I got the drop on him a little bit there. Potion of Oil. Okay, and what I will actually do right now... This is a little bit of a waste, kind of, but I mean, what else am I going to do with it? Let me dip my Blessed Mace into the Potion of Oil. My mace is less rusty. All right, so it's not even rusty anymore. I know that was a central draw of the wraith farming show, that we had a rusty mace that we beat up the wraiths and eat their corpses. You know, if there was a show on television where there was a priest named Borgard who had a rusty mace and he cast spells to create ghosts into existence, and then he beat up the ghosts, and then he ate their corpses to grow more powerful, I would watch that show. <laughs> Hit the Wumpus. All right, that's sort of an obscure reference, dude. You ever play the game Hunt the Wumpus? Or try to program it as like a programming exercise. So yeah, that's sort of like a, an old school game. You know, it's like a very simple game that's relatively easy to program. If you're trying to learn the ropes of a programming language or something like that. Apple, I guess I might as well hang on to. But I mean, seriously, as we've seen, food is not an issue. I've got so much royal jelly. I've got slow digestion if I want to slow down a little bit. i got conflict if I want to speed up a little bit and eat some useful corpses. we got our digestion game under control. Excellent control over our stomachs. Of course, if we could actually get some, some intrinsics, that'd be nice. We had a chance with the Winter Wolf and the Fire Giant to get cold and fire resistance. That would have really killed it, but not to be, not quite to be. Kill the Monculus. All right. Cool. All right, I think that's pretty much all there is to see on this floor, too. Teleport down here. All right. Uh, because I can't help myself, I'm just going to poke my head down into this next floor and take a look just to see if uh, there's anything interesting, anything out of the ordinary, or if it's just going to be a little bit more dungeoneering. But let's just take a look. Uh, interesting. It's dark. What does that mean? Okay. It's just a dark room. Never mind. All right. Statue of a cockatrice. Let's hit it with a uh, pickaxe. All right, cool. But I guess we will end the video there, honestly, because I think that's enough. But as I said, I think we're getting close to something interesting here. I can smell it. I can just sort of feel it in my dungeon crawl sense bones down here. So, uh, yeah, that was a good video, though. Seriously, ring levitation, sleep resistance, whatever else we managed to get accomplished. Ring levitation is huge, though, man, seriously. And um, it just sets us up really well going into the next phase of the game. So we're really pleased about that. Anyway, thanks for watching, you guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time for the continuing adventures of Borogod.